Hey guys, welcome to Blanity. A lot of people ask me about an analysis of DMG blockchain and here it is. Maybe a little bit late, but okay, it is how it is. By the way, uh, Bitcoin broke the 24k a few hours ago. We are now back at 23.9k USD. But it looks like this widening channel here provides some resistance here. So it's going to be interesting whether we can push through or not. But back to the DMG blockchain. So this is the crazy chart of this company. In October, they were at 10 Canadian dollar cents. Now they're at 70 Canadian dollar cents, so 7x. And they were a few days ago at 90, so um, up to 9x. So this is crazy, <laughs> crazy gains here for DMG blockchain. I have to tell you right now, I'm not invested in this company right now. Um, do always your own research. Um, it's no financial advice. So be very careful and uh, don't trust, always verify. And you know the best how to invest your money. But let's get into detail. So the chart looks a little bit crazy. Great gains here. I think a lot of traders made a lot of money. The market cap is right now 68 million Canadian dollars. So it's like uh, 50 million US dollars. Um, let's check the presentation here. So they have this nice facility here in Christiana Lake. The hardware here looks, the electric, electrical infrastructure here looks very nice. Uh, very new, um, nice build out here. And it's in Christiana Lake. It's in the south of British Columbia. We can see here very close to the US border. And this is pretty good for DMT blockchain. Because the electricity prices in British Columbia are not the cheapest in Canada. So they have the possibility um, to buy some electricity from the United States, from Washington State especially. And this is a region with one of the lowest electricity rates in Northern America. Because they have a lot of hydropower there, a lot of big hydropower, I will show you. But um, first of all, I will show you that DMG has an export license from December 23rd. So um, DMG's new ex US export license is a significant part of DMG's overall ex operational strategy of power and infrastructure independence. So they can buy from the US market, wholesale market, or from the uh, British Columbia wholesale market. So this is very nice. Um, but I want to show you something else here in Washington State. This is the Grand Coulee Dam here. It's one of the biggest hydropower plants in the world <laughs> with 7,000 megawatts operational. So this this thing is very, very big. And yeah, if, if it would be all, if um, every kilowatt would be dedicated to a miner, uh, it would be 70% of the global Bitcoin hash rate would be from this dam here. So this is crazy, I guess. Looks very nice. Yeah, and you can see here that uh, the rates in British Columbia are not the cheapest ones. Um, so there's some discount for Bitcoin miners, some initial discount here. We can see it here. This article is from 2019, but I think it's still um, it's still actual here. This rate would help BC Hydro to compete with clean jurisdictions that have lower power rates than us. She told the press conference participants, we need to get in the game. So this is the British Columbia Utilities Commission. They want to get into the game and it is two years old. And this is very interesting and they want to help Bitcoin miners because the prices are not the best in British Columbia. I heard something about five cents. So yeah, but DMG can buy in the United States. So that's very nice for them. So let's get back to the nice presentation here. Let's get a little bit into detail. So, okay, I was a little bit fast. Um, first of all, they have some, they don't have, uh, they, they have their mining here and they have blocks uh, where I go into detail in a, in a few minutes. Then they have blocks here. It's like a forensic tool. They can do analytics and auditing on the Bitcoin blockchain and on other blockchain. It's for agencies to track some transactions. So yes, I think they made some revenue there. Not really big, but yeah, it's 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 an interesting part. They have wallet score. It's an AML risk reporting. 
So it's all about AML, KYC, forensic stuff here. And they have the Wasabi Supply Chain Management. So Wasabi is for the supply chain for cannabis. It's a partnership with IBM to track the cannabis on the, the cannabis supply chain on the blockchain. So you can see every step there. Um, so this is a very nice, a very nice thing, I guess. So they have a highly experienced team that build out 100 megawatts. They um, have a partnership with Bitmain, but this is canceled. We cannot see it here. Um, it was not profitable, profitable for DMG, so they stopped it. Um, they have their own uh, 85 megawatt substation uh, to enable access to low-cost alternative energy. This is the Christiana Lake facility here. So they are publicly traded. They have their own mine management software, which I will show you. And they have a very nice um, high voltage, medium voltage and low voltage um, power infrastructure. We can see here some pictures. So for me as an energy economist, that looks very nice here. Uh, they have their own substation. They have their own management here. Um, their own monitoring. Yeah, that I think they're very good in this stuff. They have their medium uh, voltage infrastructure. Nice. And they have their low voltage infrastructure with the big cables here. Low voltage, high currents. Looks also very professional. Okay, let's have a short look. They have some containers, but I think this is not a big part of their business. So this is the mine management software. Um, I, th I know that there are a lot of mine management softwares out there, but it's nice to have your own. Um, I don't know whether it's a big cash cow or not. Um, maybe not yet. We will see. Okay, so these are the most important facts. It's an overview, but um, for me, more important is is the data about the company on the financial statements, and that's where we go now. So. Yeah, the, the last filings are from June 30th. This is the third quarter for DMG blockchain. So the end of September, uh, it's their, the end of the physical year for them. And that's why they have not filed the last quarter. Um, we will get it at the end of December because they have three months uh, at the end of the fiscal year. So yeah, I was wondering whether when they will release their results. But now we know uh, it's the end of the fiscal year was uh, September 30th. So that's why they can uh, do it uh, until the end of December. So we have until June. Okay, it is how it is. Um, that's what we have and that's what we analyze. So first of all, let's um, check the assets here. Um, yeah, they have some cash, 1.3 million Canadian dollars, some digital currencies, 1 million Canadian dollars. And they have a nice property and equipment here with 17 million. So this is the electrical infrastructure in the Christiana Lake. This looks very nice. So total assets of 22.8 million Canadian dollars. They have some debt here, some loans, uh, some current portion of loans payable here. So we have to keep an eye on this. So the balance, balance sheet looks not so bad here. So then we go to revenue. So uh, in that quarter, it was 1.36 million Canadian dollars. It was a big decrease here from 3.3 in June 30th, 2019 to 2020, from 3.3 million to 1.3 million. They also had some expenses here of 2.2 million Canadian dollars. So they have a loss of 900,000 Canadian dollars, then some other income, and the net loss is 700,000 here. Um, they have a uh, weighted average number of common shares outstanding. It's 98, eight, uh, 98 million uh, stocks. So yeah, we calculate with 100 million. So it's a little bit more easy. So that's the overview here. Um, what else do we have? Um, there's a lot of information. Uh, maybe you should read it. I've read it uh, in the last hour. Um, but um, the interesting stuff is at the end. Um, here we can see the Bitcoin balance. Um, in the September 30th, 2019, it was 139 Bitcoins. So then they mined 148. They sold 202. So now they have 86 um, Bitcoins on the balance. So it's a decreasing number. So I don't like that one. 
Um, yeah, the, this is the the uh, property and all this stuff. There we have the loans. Um, a lot of information about the loans when they have to to pay back and all this stuff. But I don't want to get into detail here. That's a very that's a lot of information. I will show you the interesting stuff. So we can see here an um, a balance of warrants and options here, a number of options, 8.8 .8 million. So I think they are all triggered now, or the most of them, because um, the prices here are below 19, Can 19 Canadian dollar cents here. So yeah, there should be some dilution here by these um, options, like eight or nine million. So maybe the number right now of common stocks is above 100 million. We will see at the end of December, going to be very interesting uh, maybe in the uh, MDNA report on the financial statements okay so let's go on uh, what else do we have here on the balance uh, yeah they have some salaries wages and benefits of 1 million uh, serve, uh, the consulting services for me that's a little bit too much the salaries and wages uh, for if you have a revenue of of 1.3 million um, so this here is the interesting part, the revenues. So we can see the digital um, currency mining revenue is 484,000 Canadian dollars. So it's a, it's decreasing here from 2019. Um, the hosting fees are also decreasing very much from 2 million to 730,000. Then they have the forensics income from their blocks here. It's 100,000, also decreasing a consulting income, also decreasing like 8x or so. So that's why the revenue is, is much lower here. You can see it here. Um, I think, yeah, that's it about the financials. So it's very mixed, um, very low revenue. The balance sheet, I mean, the assets, they look okay. But um, the revenue, the cost looks not so nice. Um, let's go on. What else do we have here? So um, we have some news. Um, so first of all, yeah, they can buy the energy in the United States. We know this. Then they launched a Bitcoin mining pool. Um, this is very interesting. Um, they focus on, on, on compliance, on KYC and AML and all this stuff. So we will we have no data about it. We will see whether this is successful or not. So, and then we have this partnership here with Hive. They, they sold all their miners to Hive. So, I mean, that's good for Hive, but um, for DMG, I mean, now they have zero miners for self-mining as I'm aware of. And that's a little bit an issue for me because um, how you will, how you get Bitcoin without self mining. So right now I think they're they're hosting 100%. So they get some fees and generate some revenue, but um, the Bitcoins, the other people get the Bitcoins and not DMG. So this is for me it's concerning, and yeah, this is not what I want to read about a company. So. Um, Let's check the the MDNA. I will show you here. I've opened this a few minutes ago. I don't know why this does not work. But um, yeah, they have some targets here. I will show you um, about their self-mining. Um, so DMG currently has 1,290 miners dedicated to self-mining and 4,200 miners for hosting mining. And they have plans to increase to 500 petaesh at the end of 2020. So as I'm aware of, they sold um, 1,240 miners of these ones to Hive, and they're hosting them for Hive. So in my opinion, they right now have close to zero petaesh, and their goal was 500 petaesh. So that's a big difference. And um, I know the old presentation, they wanted to have like next year one exahash or two exahash. And then 2022, they want 3.5 exahash. I mean, it's nice to have these goals, but 
I mean, if you have now pe zero petahash or maybe 20 or so, and you want to reach 500 petahash, this is really not good for a company. And um, yeah, it should be realistic, your targets, and uh, not this way. Okay, so let's go on with um, DMG blockchain. What else do we have? Um, right now, they're diluting a little bit um, their stocks with a, with a private placement. Yeah, before this run up to 90 cents, they had the pri private placement here from 1 million Canadian dollars um, for 17 Canadian dollar cents per unit um, to get 5.8. Uh, to sell 5.8 million uh, shares here. So, hmm, yes, I think it was an expensive delusion. They should have waited um, for higher stock price to dilute, but it was a private placement. So, yeah, I'm not very happy about this stuff. Okay, but yeah, that's how they do it. How they do it, these miners. Okay, so what else? What else do we have? So the, this is the, the pool here, the mining pool that looks very nice. And yes, um, as, I, as I told you, right now I'm not invested in DMG. Um, maybe I will buy some, some, some shares of them. But um, yeah, maybe you can hear it. I'm not 100% convinced. They have no self-mining right now. They have some nice solutions with nice software tools and so on. But um, I'm wondering how they will generate cash flow. And in the end, it's all about Bitcoin, in my opinion. And if you have no self-mining, you will have no Bitcoin. So I'm waiting for the, 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 the financial results for the fiscal year at the end of December. Maybe I will do an, another analysis about them. So I think the big price increase was because of traders and the the market cap was very low, so people and the, the name blockchain and all this stuff. But uh, for me, the fundamentals right now they don't back this this increase. It's it's at 50 million, so maybe that's okay for DMG. But you know there are some other companies with uh, like uh, more than 500 petahash um, of mining power with 50 million uh, market cap. So I'm not 100, not 100% sure about DMG right now. So we will keep an eye on it and we will do some analysis again about them. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Auf Wiedersehen.